today I'm going to show you how you can upgrade the lighting on your airplane for a couple hundred dollars in a couple of hours with a couple of hand tools without needing to be an AMP mechanic. Super simple. This is going to be a really fun one. Before we get into the video, I just want to remind you guys, I'm giving away a Bose A30 headset to one of you guys as soon as we hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel. There's only two rules. You got to be subscribed to the channel and follow me on Instagram. Also, later on in the video, I'm going to drop a code for discounted merch on the site, shopgeardown.com. All right, enough of this. Let's get into the video. Okay, so my friends over at Wheeland sent me this awesome package, and let's open it up and see what's in here. So first off, this looks like this is our new landing light. Now, this plane already has an LED landing light from Wheeland, Aerospace Technologies. I'm, all, I'm old school, I'm gonna keep calling them Wheeland because it just it is what it is for me. Um, oh, wait a minute, this isn't a landing light. Look at this. This is our new LED top of the tail strobe. Look at that. I'm gonna show you guys how easy these things are to put in with just normal hand tools. You don't need anything special to do this. It's so easy. Uh, let's see what else we got. Ah, here's our landing light. Now, as I was saying before, uh, this plane already has a Whelan, um LED landing light on it, but this is the newest Parmetheus G3. This is supposed to be way brighter and uh, way gnarlier, so I'm super stoked on this. Wow, the housing is even sick. Look at that, it's all black. Now that is cool. Again, super simple, two wire hookup. You guys are gonna love this. Um, tell me in the comments, do you guys have uh, LEDs already? Do you want to upgrade? If you want to upgrade, why haven't you upgraded yet? Um, there's a couple companies, other companies out there. I've seen them like on eBay and stuff. And you guys got to remember, those other companies may or may not be certified. You don't want to put stuff that's not certified on a certified airplane. So even if it's lighting, spend the extra few bucks, get the good stuff. The good thing about Wheeling is I've never had one stop working. Like these things are indestructible. I have had them on every plane I've ever owned. Um, I'm gonna take you guys through in another upcoming video. We're gonna get these things on the Citation, which I already have them on there, but Wheeling Custom made me some lights that don't already exist for the Citation, which is super cool. So I'm a big fan of these guys. Um, they make really, really awesome products. They're super bright. They last a long time. They never break. So, all right, there's our landing light. Looks like this is our tail light. Little tail light here. Again, two wire connection. I don't know if you guys see that, but we'll show it to you. Look at that. Everything is so simple. And we're gonna do this all with nothing more than hand tools. Like you probably already have everything I'm gonna use today in your garage. All right, this looks like our green nav light. Now this side could get a little more complicated um, as far as wiring, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it. It's super simple. I believe these are wired up to strobe. I'm not sure which ones they gave me. These are the Orion 650s, um, but I don't know. So what we'll do is I've actually got a 12 volt battery here and we're gonna test them so we know what wire does what. We automatically know that black is ground. So there's our green and Get rid of that. This is red. Boom, same deal. So these are four wires, super simple. They come with everything you need, including the schematic in here. Like, like that, super easy. Now, being that the lights on this airplane and probably most of the airplanes you fly are already from Wheeland, they're just old school. You don't have to do any kind of drilling or adding nut certs or anything like that. The footprint is exactly the same. So you take the screw out, take the screw out, take the screw out, three screws, disconnect the wires, connect the new wires, three screws, you're all done. It's so freaking simple. So um, let's get to testing these and see how they see which wire does what. Um, I know we've got the schematic here, but I always like to just double check before I start cutting and, um, and making new connections. Okay, look at how gorgeous these are. These things just look so good. I upgraded these on my old Sirius, and when I put these on, it just, especially after a fresh paint job, they just make the plane look so much more modern. 
So what you guys see here is just a standard, this is just a car battery, nothing crazy. So it looks like these have anti-collisions, which is cool. So red looks like it's anti-collision, so let's test that. Let's get red and black. Get these suckers up, get this up where you guys can see it. All right, so there's black, here's red, holy cow. These things are bright as hell. Okay, uh, yellow is for the sink, so that's so you can have both wingtips flashing at the same time. Unfortunately, the arrow is not already wired um, for wingtip strobes, so I'm not gonna go through all that because that's a process. I literally just finished putting the carpet in and I would have to rip all the carpet out and all the interior to run the wires for that. So we're just gonna wire these up just as um, position lights only. So kind of sucks, but it's just a lot of extra work that I don't really wanna do right now. Um, and we have an awesome, uh, we have an awesome tail light too. So, and when you guys see um, that new top of the tail strobe, we're not gonna need uh, end of the wing position lights. Actually, let's go grab that. Let's try it. I'm really anxious. See how bright it is. Oh my gosh, that is so bright. I screwed up by looking straight at it and that was not a good decision. This thing is insanely bright. I don't know which one we should do first. I think we'll start with the easy ones. Let's do nav lights and then we'll pop it in the tail and then we'll do the landing light and the other side. So let's just get into it. First things first, we know we're not using yellow or red. Sorry, I don't, can't get that to focus. We know we're not using yellow or red because that's for the anti-collision lights. So what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna separate them out individually. I'm gonna put a little piece of heat shrink over each one. Here's one. We'll melt this sucker down. Here's yellow. Melt that sucker down. And then what I like to do, now not everybody does this, but I'll get another piece of heat shrink, put them inside that together, and then we'll shrink that guy down as well because that will um, just make sure we're not getting any moisture in there and just make sure those wires are not flopping around too much. Just did green, now I'm gonna do the same thing with red and we'll get into the insole. Now, I just want to clarify something really quick. Personally, I fly in the clouds. Um, I fly IFR a decent amount. So um, we could wire up the anti-collision lights to the, um, the navigation lights. So anytime the navigation lights are on, the anti-collision lights would be flashing. Now, I like the ability to shut off my anti-collisions when you're in the clouds because that can be disorienting. Um, you know, you're flying around the clouds, you can't see, and all you're seeing is all these reflections from all the beacons and strobes and everything going off. So it's actually common practice that a lot of people, they'll kill the beacon and they'll kill their strobes when you're flying a hard IMC. It's very disorienting, like I said. So that's why I'm opting not to leave those connected. And I, I just don't feel like installing a switch and running new wires for it. But they do look awesome. But in my case, they're just not there. If I ever sell this plane, I'll let whoever know buys it that it is there. And if you just want to run, you know, three simple wires, it's pretty simple. So I just, it's not something I wanna do. Okay, the plane is pretty dirty, I know, let's not talk about that. Now, one of the things we might have to do is a lot of times um, these older style incandescent bulbs, they're grounded straight away to the airframe right here, either via, like via its mounting point. So a lot of times there may only be one wire. If that's the case, we're gonna have to crimp a, a ring terminal and um, We'll basically just mount that in here somewhere, but we'll take a look right now. We'll see what we're getting into. Small Phillips screw. Make sure if you're using a driver to set your torque. Um, I like to set between like four and six. Five is pretty good. Just because we want to make sure we don't strip anything. And you always want to go slow. All right, so first screw is out. We'll take off this cover and we always want to hang on to this glass because this sucker can fall out and it will break. Look at that beautiful green glass these are kind of cool I have a whole bunch of them all right so now there's three screws in here we're gonna remove all right last one all right there we go it's three screws and this guy is loose okay so just as I thought we only have one wire on this guy so I may have to pull the wingtip to take a look at what we got going on inside. 
and um, we may need to uh, create a lead. So this guy grounds itself to the airplane. Let's be kind of gentle here via its mounting base. All right. This guy should just come off. There we go. Old one is out. Check out these bulbs. You guys ever seen one of these? It's like half a mirror. The back is covered. So just as I suspected, there was a second lead in there. It's a broken ring terminal, so we'll put it, sorry. So we'll put a new one of these guys on, and that's it. We're gonna wire up our new um, light, and we're good to go. Check out how easy this is. Okay, this is really simple. Now these are called knife connectors. I don't know if we can get that to focus, there you go. So this is a set of them. So it's aviation stuff. You can order these on aircraft spruce. You can use other type of connectors, but these are what are most commonly used. And basically they connect together like this and they crisscross and they snap into place, creating a nice uh, solid. Uh, it's hard to do with just the little nubs, but you guys get the idea. They basically, you can snap them straight and that makes a nice solid connection. Put a piece of heat shrink over it, zip tie it, and it's good to go. So you can get these off of, at uh, Aircraft Spruce. And like I said, these are called knife connectors. Uh, in the industry, we call them handshakes because it looks like two little hands shaking hands. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut this guy off. Boom. We're gonna strip this guy back. I have an automatic stripper, but I'm gonna do this in a way that you guys can see what we're doing. All right, so that guy's stripped off, ready to go. Now, this is a fancy tool. This is a DMC. These are pretty expensive. You can crimp these with normal wild crimpers, but I have good stuff, so may as well use it, right? So we're going to load the handshake in the holder like so. You guys see what I'm doing? We're going to preload this guy. There we go. We are going to insert the wire into the handshake. Sometimes the wires may fray a little bit, so I like to give them a little bit of a twist. Quick little twist. Insert that guy in there, like so. There you go, sorry, I'm trying to do this for the camera and I can't see. All right, and give it a good squeeze. And that sucker is on there for good. So that's our ground, we already know that. I would imagine there's probably a handshake inside of here. Let's cut the sucker off and see. I don't have a normal pair of dikes on me right now. So let's see if that's a handshake. Hey, what do you know? There's an old, gross, corroded handshake. So theoretically, we can clean this up and just reuse it. So we only had to cut and crimp one wire so far. Look at that, boom, straight on. Now the reason you wrap these up in one of these, the reason we wrap this guy up is so that these can't touch each other and short. So that's the purpose of this sleeve here. I'm actually gonna get rid of this because this is old and gross. And uh, we'll put a nice new piece of heat shrink on there. Also, I like to put a little bend in my wires like this. See this here? See how I bent them down? I like to bend these down just because it holds them here. Otherwise, these guys can just slip back in there. And then if you can't reach them with a tool, what will wind up happening is you got to pull the whole wing tip off to get them out and that's a pain in the ass. So always make sure you do this or put a little piece of tape on them. Sometimes I'll put tape. These ones are long enough, but um, it's another thing I like to do just to help prevent any further headache. Now we've got a little CRC electronic cleaner, really easy. We're just going to spray this sucker down. You could hit it with a wire brush. This actually doesn't look too bad. so. I'm just going to leave it at is, as is. There's a lot of fresh copper showing, so this should be fine. Okay, now I am going to crimp um, the connectors on the lights themselves. So again, we're going to, this little guy, this is a little jaw that holds whatever you're trying to crimp. So I'm going to reset it, open this guy up, get my little guy in there. See how he holds him in there. And we'll just close it up making sure this is flush, sitting in the ridges like it's supposed to. All right, that guy's in. All right, there we go. Now it's flush. 
You guys see that? It's nice and flush, ready for a perfect crimp. This is probably my favorite tool made by DMC. I love this thing. All right, so now we will just insert this guy in. Give it a squeeze. Unlock the jaw. Boom. We get a nice handshake. Now we're gonna do a quick test. So I know that this guy is my power. Boom. There's one. Here's two. You see how much easier these guys are to handshake when they have a little wire you can hold on to. Oh, these new ones are so tight. Okay. We'll make sure they're not gonna touch. Let's back up the camera a little tiny bit. And we'll go fire this guy up real quick. We have light. All right, this week's code is gonna be WAT. Shout out to our friends over at Whelan for hooking me up with the, all the awesome lights for our Piper Arrow project. So enter code WAT at checkout at shopgeardown.com. That'll get you 15% off of anything in the store with the exception of black flight bags. Black flight bags are back ordered right now. Not They will not be back in stock until uh, the beginning of July. But anybody that orders a black bag while they're on pre-order now is entered to win a completely stocked flight bag. So I'm gonna pick one of you guys that pre-orders a black flight bag between now and we put them back in stock. I'm gonna choose one order and I'm gonna load it up. It's gonna be five, $600 worth of stuff in there, all pilot gear, maybe a gift card or two, you never know. I'm crazy like that. So enough of this, back to the video, let's go. Now that we've tested everything, now it's time to get this bad boy ready for mounting. Okay, so we'll get our screwdriver ready. Bring this down a little bit. We'll take this screw off the back here. These I always like to do by hand. I don't like using um, power tools on anything else. I should be wearing gloves, I just don't have any here. And I don't wanna go rooting through anybody's box because you don't wanna touch any of this stuff. All right. That guy's off. Now we gotta unseat the base. So you really wanna try not to touch the chrome in here because fingerprints, like diamonds, are forever. There's two little screws in there that we gotta get out. And there's, I believe there's one more in the front. I gotta double check, but I think there's one more. So we're gonna start with these two and that should release the base. And then we can mount the base to the plane. These little screws I'm taking right out right now, these are what actually holds the lights to the plane. So I just wanna make sure these are in and good. All right, so there's another screw under here. So I gotta get this little gasket out without screwing it up, which I'm kind of nervous about. There we go. Just gotta lift, get, kind of get it lifted up just a tiny bit. Sorry, it's kind of hard to show you guys this as I'm doing it. All right, there we go. Now you can see the little screw in there. Let's get that sucker out. There we go, there's our base. Like I said in the beginning of the video, these holes will match up with the holes from the old light. Same manufacturer, same deal. So now we're gonna mount this guy right in here. So we want to pull our old wires through the new hole. And let's find our screws from the old housing. All right, we're gonna slip our heat shrink on these guys. I know that my red lead, my red handshake is the ground and the white one, which was the old one was the positive. So we got our heat shrink on. Let's connect up our new guys. So black goes to red, or black goes to white, I should say. Boom. We'll cover that guy up with heat shrink. Give it a little fire. Okay, that's one side done. Now we'll repeat. Now we'll repeat with the other side. See that almost fell into the airplane. 
which that would have sucked. All right, that guy's on. You could use a ray cam or like a solder sleeve or something like this, but this all works just fine. Okay, those are all set. It's time to install this sucker. Here we go. So there he is. Get you in there, pal. Boom. Get that gasket back into place. Last screw. All right, brand new microfiber. Just trying to get any fingerprints we may or may not have got on this sucker. This chrome is really, really fragile. Like it scratches really easy, so you really want to try not to touch it. And I'm an idiot and I touched it, so try not to do that. Here we go. Again, not too tight, just snug. Give it a quick wipe and look at that. This looks awesome. Let's test it out. Unfortunately, we're not using all, all the LEDs in there, like I said. Um, and that's just because um, I don't want these things strobing in the clouds. But, all right, I'm going to move on to the right side. No need to show you that because it's the exact same as this side. And then um, we'll go up to the uh, tail and do that beacon. Um, this one's going to be a little tricky for me to show you guys because my tripod doesn't reach that high. But we're going to pull the screws and do the same thing we did over there checking polarity and setting up um, handshakes. Let's get into it. Now this guy just slides out, which may be a little tough because we just got a new paint job. Look at this thing. Wow, wow, wee wow. All right, our positive and negative connections have been made. Sucker's on. Now all we gotta do is line up the holes. Now we don't wanna go full tight until we get them all in. All right, that's all three. Let's see if it works. All right, now that thing is insanely bright. Holy cow, it's too bright to look at. Now let's look at the difference between this green LED I have set up over here, brightness wise, versus the cheesy little red light on the other side, that incandescent. Major difference in brightness. All right, let's tackle this tail light. This guy is really easy, two screws, takes it out. Sorry for the shaking. I have you guys suction cup to the rudder right now. Here's a testament to how long this light has been on here. These are slotted screws. So this is definitely an upgrade that needs to be done. You'll see how easy this one is. Literally two screws, two wires, one set of handshakes, new bulb goes on, we're done. Now, sometimes you got to be really careful with these because um, a lot of times these screws will corrode into place and you try to take them off and they'll break. I've had that happen. Oh, I've had that happen several times. This is cool. I wish uh, these things were still made out of glass. I'm pretty sure they're all made out of plastic now, but I love that they used to be made out of glass. All right. So the sucker's out. Oh, man. All right, so this is our first problem of the day. At some point in this plane's life, um, this thing has been off before, and this is all the pull we get out of it. That's it. So I'm gonna have to pull the whole cap of the tail off here to get to the wires. Sucks. I had a feeling that was gonna happen, but no big deal. Grab the drill. It's only uh, eight screws. We'll get it off real quick. Lost another washer. Okay. Here we go. It's actually not that taut. 
what am I hung? I'm hung up on something. I gotta set the camera up for a second. There we go. Okay. Now we're in business. Let's get get ready for the old snip snip. One. We want this one as long as we can get it. So I'm gonna cut it off straight at the light. Like I said before, Whelan knows um, they made most of the lights that are on these planes. So they give you really long piggy tails with these guys, really long pigtails, and they put a connector in line. So all I gotta do is put handshakes on the two wires here on the, on the uh, rudder and connect the sucker and we're done. Super, super easy. They make this simple, so simple even I can do it. And I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. And we know this one's our power. This one here is our ground. You guys can see how fast this process is. I'll be done with this whole entire plane in under an hour, which is insane. All right, these guys are ready. Disconnect this lead here. Let's see that. Connect my handshakes. Let me get a piece of, um, okay, actually I'm gonna do this a different way. I'm gonna mount this guy first because I have more of a pigtail that way than I will this way, just because this wire is so short. And we mostly just want to make sure that we have enough. Yeah, see, this guy is not going to reach out the tip of that um, tail coat. So what I could do is I could lengthen this wire, but there's no need. I'm just going to mount this guy first into the tail, connect the connectors, and then um, with this tail cap off, or this rudder cap off, and then I'll bolt the rudder cap into place. So, easy. And made it really easy again. New, modern Phillips screws in this guy. You gotta take these little uh, nuts off that secure it all together. Now this guy should just thread straight into the old housing because again, like for like, should fit right in. So let me grab it. Okay. So fish this guy through, pops right out the bottom just like that. Boom. Fits in perfectly. Get a screwdriver, tighten this down. I'm trying to do all this on a ladder one handed and talking to you guys about it. Almost done with two. Uh, I mounted it upside down. See, there's a little index in there that says top. So I'm going to pause, flip this around, and then we'll come back. All right, guys, this isn't a car. So if this thing says top, see, I switch it around. I don't know you guys see the top in there now. If it says top, it has to go to the top. This is an airplane, it's not a car. So if something's backwards or something's not right, you always gotta take the time to make it correct. Um, I don't know why one side is top and one side's bottom, but it could have something to do with the way that the light is uh, scatters from the LEDs or something, and it's part of certification. This is a certified plane, so you always gotta make sure you do stuff correctly. So now I'm gonna get this sucker back on. Okay, that's in. Now, one-handed, I can connect this connector, hopefully, without dropping it. Right, it's connected to the wires inside. Now, before I tighten all the screws back on the top of this thing, we'll fire it up. Should be on. Uh-oh. Oh! We got light. You're not supposed to be able to see it from the front. So I'll show you guys this. I was like, oh no, it's not working. But just kidding. Once we get to within 180 degrees of it, there it is. Bright as day. All right. I am going to run the screws back in that tail, uh, the rudder cap there. And then we'll get on to the landing light. And then this video is over. Hey guys, don't forget. Uh, we're about to hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel. When we do, I'm giving away a brand new Bose A30 dual GA plug with Bluetooth fully loaded pilot headset to somebody that subscribes to this channel and follows me on Instagram. My Instagram's down below right here. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram. I got a lot more giveaways to go. I'm getting tired, so let's get this thing wrapped up and uh, show you guys a Piper Air with all new Whelan lighting. All right, guys, let's talk landing lights. This is one of the most inexpensive modifications you can make that directly impacts safety in any airplane. 
I don't care what you fly, whether it's a jet, a piston, a helicopter, a gyrocopter, your landing light is huge. If you're flying at nighttime, you need one of these, you need it super bright. And you guys are gonna see, it is so simple to change one of these. It's literally three screws, three, three screws. This is gonna take me two minutes or less to change. So cheap, so easy to do. I'm gonna show you how right now. It's amazing. If you fly an airplane or you own an airplane, you should definitely, definitely change out your landing light for one of these. This is the easiest mod you can ever do on an airplane. Open the box, save that, pull your light out. There it is. Two screws on the back. Thankfully, we went to Phillips yet again. We'll set that down right here. Ready for how easy this is? One screw, Phillips. Take off your retaining ring. Don't let your existing light drop. Two screws. These are Phillips, so that sucks. So we'll just remember the radio looking wire goes to the right hand side. Switch to Phillips. Here we go. This is real time. No cuts, no edits right here. In, boom, one screw out. Two screws out. Old one's done. New one. All right, which side's the top? Don't forget, these do have tops and bottoms. And we're just reversing, so no big deal there. With using a power drill. Um, I will tighten it manually, though. Switch this screwdriver around and not lose that screw. All right. This guy was on the left. Now, I never put these things in with a screwdriver. Always do it manually. You don't want to over torque this and ruin a several hundred dollar light. Look at the heat sink on the back of this thing compared to the old one. Look at that massive difference. All right. Again, we're not going for super tight, just snug. Hand tight is good. And then maybe like a little, I don't know, quarter, half turn more. All right. That sucker is in. Tight, tight, tight. Boom. Let's get her mounted. She fits nicely. All right, let's get our securing ring. We have a new gasket on this one, so this old one we're gonna toss. Bye bye. All right, get that guy up in there. Now there's a tab in here that will have this thing seated exactly where it needs to go, and it all looks correct. Get in your hole. Something just kind of binding a little bit. There you go. It wasn't indexed correctly. All right, let's get our screw in. This new gasket's a little bit fatter. So I'm going to reuse our old one. This one is more suited for this retaining ring. No big deal there. Oh, oh, oh. I can't see the top. I don't know. Somebody turned the lights off. Here, I can't see very well. flip it at all this gasket's just a little big for this ring not a huge deal I'm just gonna have to make it work 
So if I didn't have an old crappy ring on my headlight, I would have been done with this already. We'd be testing it, but my landing light has a crappy ring. All right, top, bottom. Where's our index tab? Oh, this is crazy. The new one doesn't have an index, index tab. So I'll show you guys the difference here. See this old one has this little tab right here. That makes it so you can perfectly align it up and down. The new one doesn't have that, so that's what's throwing me off. So we're just going to align it as best we can by eye. All right, suckers in. Let's get our screw going. Okay, there we go. It's a little crooked and that bothers me. Oh, I gotta pull it all the way out. This sucks. Okay, we're still, we're only at five and a half minutes here. But now this is just because I'm being picky. But I like my stuff symmetrical and looking good. Okay. There we go. That looks straight. Okay, we're done, six minutes. And that was with a little bit of difficulties on my fault because I was searching for this little tab right there and it didn't have it. But there you have it, it's in, it's done, six minutes. Bye bye old, hello new. Look at the difference in those two. This is supposed to be way brighter, let's test it out. All right, let's check out that landing light. Holy cow. That thing is insanely bright. All right, there we go. Red is on. This thing is done. I upgraded all of the lighting on my Legacy Piper Arrow in under one hour for next to no money with just a screwdriver, a drill, a set of wire cutters, and some crimpers. Incredible. Let's fire this thing up, see how she looks. As I said earlier, at 50,000 subs, which is probably gonna be this weekend, so next video I'm gonna announce the winner. Guys, thank you so much for coming along with me on this one. We just put all new LED lighting on my Piper Arrow for just a couple hundred bucks in just under an hour of time with basic hand tools. Life is so good. Uh, make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. Subscribe to the channel here if you wanna be entered to win that brand new Bose A30 headset I'm giving away. Remember, like, comment, subscribe tell me what a terrible mechanic I am and how much you hate the arrow. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Thank you.